Welcome everybody. In previous sessions, we've covered the major roles of glutathione, those being summarized by the acronym IDEA. Just to remind you, the I stands for the immune system, the D for detoxification, the E for energy, and of course, A for antioxidant. In this video, let's take a much closer look at something precious to all of us, E for energy, and how glutathione is so critical to keep us going strong throughout the day. If you wanna get more into the topic, feel free to read the chapter on glutathione and energy in my latest book. There are so many ways in which glutathione gives you energy, from simply improving your health to more complex explanations on a tissue level, like muscle strength, uh, to a cellular level, like the elimination of toxins, and even right down to a molecular level, where things like a single atom or electron are considered. Now, who hasn't felt tired for no reason or didn't wish to have more energy to get through the day or even the next hour. How many people have actually visited their doctor for a medical consultation have been told, we can't find anything wrong with you, or you must just be getting older, or better still, it's all in your head. All of these at times may be true, but as science and research has taught us over the past little while, we absolutely need to consider glutathione as part of the process. There are so many clinical studies that have shown that glutathione levels are correlated with improved physical performance, with improved mental performance, even with better sleep. But we're going to go much deeper into the actual mechanisms today by which our body, our very cells, derive their energy. So a little biology lesson would be appropriate here. A body is made up of specialized parts like skin, bones, lungs, liver. Uh, each of these components are constructed of unique tissue. And each of these tissues are made up of specialized cells. So a cell is a basic building block of your body. But this begs the question, what makes up a cell? Well, each cell itself has its own unique parts, some for storing genetic information like the nucleus of a cell, some geared to manufacture proteins like our ribosomes. So is there a cellular machine devised to produce energy. In fact, there is. It's called a mitochondria. Of course, although our mitochondria play a number of different roles, think of these mitochondria like little batteries which are needed to provide power to the cell in which it lives. Cells that sit around not doing much, like a fat cell, have very few mitochondria. Liver cells, which are actively metabolizing biochemicals 24-7, can have thousands of mitochondria because they require more energy. Without getting into a complicated discussion of biochemistry, let's look at a few basic truths about energy production. Whether it's a nuclear station or a campfire, energy production always results in two consequences. Number one, heat and number two, waste products. Consider a gasoline engine. It requires water cooling or the engine will eventually overheat and it requires an exhaust to carry away the burnt fuel. Our mitochondria are not dramatically different. As they produce energy for our cells, they too produce excess heat and waste products in the form of free radicals. Just to remind you, a free radical is what causes oxidative stress, and we've learned in the past that the major substance in our body that fights oxidative stress is our good friend, glutathione. Mitochondria are absolutely dependent on glutathione to handle the heat produced and to neutralize the potential damage done by free radicals and oxidative stress. It's our master antioxidant, the glutathione, once again to the rescue. 
Without it, our mitochondria literally would burn up and stop functioning. The easier our cells have access to good supplies of glutathione, the better our energy production will be. Keep your engines running cool to health.